Before getting started, the cook decided to amass some casserole knowledge. Entomologically speaking, the word casserole was French for saucepan, from the Middle French casse or pan, from the Middle Latin catia, and he figured probably the Greek kaiathos, meaning bowl or cup. So, technically, any wide, shallow cooking vessel with two handles and a lid could technically be called a casserole. Now, all he had to do was find something to put in his casserole. The cook was certain that somewhere along the line, the word casserole had come to signify not only a vessel, but the food cooked in it. Seeking guidance, he turned to books. After studying many recipes, the cook came to the conclusion that casseroles are either bound, like broccoli or tuna casserole, layered like lasagna or moussaka, or scoopable like bean or pot pie. He further hypothesized that a casserole had to contain one to two main ingredients, some kind of starch, aromatics, seasonings, and a binder such as eggs and or mayonnaise. The cook felt certain that he could improve the old recipes by using the contents of his freezer, fridge, and pantry. Six cups of broccoli and 12 ounces of sliced mushrooms would serve as core ingredients. A pack of ramen-style noodles would play the starch, and its flavor pack, along with salt and plenty of black pepper, would season nicely. Binding power and considerable flavor and body would come from half a cup of yogurt, half a cup of mayonnaise, two eggs, a cup and a quarter of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, and a third of a cup of blue cheese dressing. Yum! After putting a large pot of water on to boil, the cook turned his attention towards the vegetation. Broccoli had always been his favorite. Maybe it was the high fiber, maybe the vitamin A, folate, vitamin C, or calcium, or maybe it's just because broccoli tastes good. He especially appreciated the oft overlooked stems, which beneath their woody exterior are luscious and flavorful. He peeled them lovingly with a paring knife and then quartered them so they would cook as quickly as the larger pieces of crown. When the water reached a rolling boil, he added several heavy pinches of kosher salt, and then dumped in the broccoli all at once. Within moments, something extraordinary began to happen inside the pot. The hot water started moving into the broccoli surface cells, and that liberated the oxygen captured therein. As the bubbles moved away, the broccoli's true inner green color was revealed. After a minute, the cook removed the broccoli to an ice water bath to halt the cooking process. This quick chilling would help stop enzymatic action in the vegetables, allowing them to remain greener longer, even with additional cooking. The cook would have used the same procedure to prepare any hard green vegetable for salads or crudité platters or for hot, fast cooking methods like sautéing, which might not sufficiently soften the food. After sautéing the mushrooms in a pat of butter, the cook turned off the heat and stirred in the broccoli. Then came the remaining ingredients, the mayonnaise the yogurt, the blue cheese dressing, yum, the eggs. Since there was already fat in the pan and reduced heat, the eggs would certainly not scramble. Then came half the cheddar cheese and the ramen noodles, crumbled. How could he get away adding raw noodles to a casserole? Because ramen noodles are cooked then deep fried before being dried and packaged. Last came the flavor pack. The cook then stirred to combine, rather sloppily, I might add. The chunky and rather unappetizing looking goo went into the only casserole he was willing to part with. He was pretty sure it wasn't his and might very well have been left over from a previous church social pillaging. <clears throat> He lubricated it liberally with non-stick cooking spray before dosing in the goodness. He contemplated momentarily whether he had chosen too small a vessel. If he had decided to use a larger one, he could have packed the mixture much more lightly, which would have resulted in a crisper, less moist casserole. 
by packing it into the smallest casserole possible, he guaranteed that it would remain dense, moist, and sliceable, but only if he packed it down, reducing the airspace inside. Next came several grinds of good black pepper, and last but not least, the remaining cheddar cheese. This would create not only a delicious crust, but a physical binder that would help to hold it together for easier slicing later. The casserole then went into a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. Lid on, please. 45 minutes later, the lid was removed so that the cheese on top could solidify, creating a crunchy, yummy exoskeleton. Like a cake, all casseroles need to cool for at least half an hour before cutting so that the starch and protein structures can set. 